Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is July 26, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I want to drill down into a, a discussion that, that, that we've been covering in, in a, a, a more superficial capacity. And, and this is the issue of, of extreme weather related to climate change. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill down into some of the scientific discussions that are occurring on Twitter with regards to extreme weather linked to climate change and, and recent extreme weather events. Now, this graphic that we're looking at here is, is a graphic of, of extreme heat that is presently occurring in the Northern Hemisphere. And extreme heat waves are, are one signal, signal signature that is, that is directly linked to human-caused climate change. And there is, there is, there is no dispute that, that, that increasing heat waves are a signature climate change event. But there are other events that are ongoing that, are, that appear to be linked to climate change and that, that certain scientific studies are indicating are linked to climate change, and I want to talk a bit more about that. So this is this picture has been posted by Climate Signals. Climate Signals is a climate change fingerprinting organization, a, a basically expert organization that is beginning to post climate change signals in extreme weather events. And this is very important as the Earth warms and we continue to see more extreme weather that is related to climate change. So according to climate signals, climate change is landing a double whammy role in driving the wave of extreme heat, obliterating records around the world, a thermodynamic role in amplifying the impact of the jet stream and dynamic circulation role in helping to set up the unusual configuration of the jet stream. So the jet stream is, is, is being talked about quite a lot. And, and the reason why is that, that if the jet stream becomes extreme, it, it tends to generate extreme weather. And I'm just going to highlight another quote from Skeptical Science as you think about that. Skeptical Science notes, kinked, buckled, stuck, or stalled, it doesn't matter how you describe it. The jet stream, the ribbon of air that circles the Earth, is doing strange things. So what is the jet stream doing? Well, over the United States, over the past two weeks, we have seen this persistent pattern in which there is a strong ridge in the west and a deep trough in the east. And this pattern has amplified extreme weather events in the west in the form of very severe record-breaking heat and severe wildfires and increasing drought. And in the east, it has generated instability. It has tapped moisture from the tropics and it has produced very, very extreme, record-breaking in many cases, rainfall. So, so this feature is a feature of, of severe weather. But it's also increasingly linked in a number of studies to human-caused climate change. And, and this, this, this particular picture was, was posted by Hunter Cutting on Twitter, and he is a part of this discussion of how climate change appears to be altering the jet stream and, and that there is a growing consensus among a number of scientists and experts that that these high amplitude jet stream features are a result of, of impacts such as Arctic warming. And, and to that point, I want to call your attention to a, to a recent statement by Dr. Michael Mann. Now, Dr. Michael Mann is one of the preeminent experts on human-caused climate change. And if you want to engage into a, in a scientific discussions discussion on climate change, I, I highly recommend that you follow him on Twitter. Now, Dr. Michael Mann notes, the extreme weather we are seeing this summer around the Northern Hemisphere 
such as extreme heat waves, floods, droughts, and wildfires, is related to an unusually stationary, highly meandering perturbation in the jet stream. Our work shows that this sort of pattern, which has been associated with many of the most extreme persistent weather events in recent years, including the 2003 European heat wave, the 2010 Moscow wildfires, the 2011 Texas and Oklahoma drought, and the 2016 Alberta wildfires, among others, is becoming more common because of human-caused climate change, and in particular, because of amplified Arctic warming. Now, unpacking this, I, I just wanna drill down and, and talk about how climate change-related features in the Arctic probably don't stay in the Arctic. And, and one example of this is, is sea ice loss. Now, if, if the ocean is typically covered by ice, a large portion of the ocean are typically covered by ice, then ice has a different physical characteristic. It, it reflects sunlight, it creates a cooler environment, or it helps to generate a, like a feedback system that generates a cooler environment, and, and air circulates in a certain way over ice. Now, if that ice melts and changes to a liquid environment, then that changes local weather features such as winds and, and precipitation. And these local weather features, if they become broad ranging enough, start to affect the upper atmosphere and start to affect lower latitude weather patterns. And what we have seen in the Arctic is that sea ice loss has traded ice for water over hundreds of thousands of square miles, and in some cases, millions of square miles of ocean. And this has a big effect. It, it, it alters weather, not just on a local scale, but on an upper level atmospheric scale, and on a regional scale, and has connections to changes in weather as far as the tropics. So, so this is how climate change can, can throw some rocks in, into the, atm the atmospheric stream and, and the energy balance that, that would typically occur on Earth. And, and, and those changes affect the jet stream. Now, that's the notion of, a, of, of the scientific focus on fingerprinting extreme weather patterns in their relationship to, to changes in places like the Arctic that are visible and ongoing. Now, one of the fingerprinting methods is identifying quasi-resonant amplification features. Now, now that's a highly technical scientific term. So, so what does it mean? It means that there's, there, are, there are various climate signals that occur in correlation with the stuck jet stream patterns and associated extreme weather events that have been occurring recently. And, and recently go, you know, is, 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 is a relative term. In, in this particular graph, it goes back as far as 1983, but arguably there were already changes ongoing in the Earth's atmosphere as the Earth was warming and considerably warming in comparison with past climates, even as far back as the 1980s. And so what we see though, is that these resonance features become more apparent as, as we get closer to the current day. And of course, these, these go through 2011 and, and there are studies now that are, are looking at recent extreme events. And I'm sure that the signal in these events, the climate change signal in these events are going to be looked at more and more as time goes by. So just to sum up, the heat waves that are ongoing certainly have a, a very strong link to climate change. But there is also a, an arguable link to climate change in other extreme weather patterns. They're associated with these high amplitude jet stream waves that we are seeing come up more and more often in, in association with extreme weather events, and particularly in Northern Hemisphere summer. 
So thank you for joining me, and I will be chatting with you soon.